Welcome to our review on the uses of plant hormones. So as we've already seen in our previous video, we've got this key hormone that's involved in those different tropisms called auxin. And the way that it actually interacts with the plant is by stimulating growth by causing that process of cell elongation. A second thing that it will do is it can help regulate the development of fruit. Now, auxin isn't the only hormone involved. We've also got two others that we're going to look at at this point. Ethene, which is a gas, and that causes fruit to ripen by stimulating the conversion of starch into sugars. And gibberellins, which promote growth, particularly the elongation of stem cells. And what we find is that they can also be used to end the dormancy of seeds and buds. So make sure that you do know these three examples of hormones, auxin, cause cell elongation and regulate fruit development, ethene, ripens fruit by converting starch into sugar, and gibberellins promote growth particularly in the stem and end dormancy in seeds and buds. So now we know some examples of hormones, we're going to have a look at some of these different commercial uses for them. So the first one is one that you may well have used the hormones for at home, which is killing weeds. Now, when we're talking about a weed killer, we're talking about a selective herbicide, and these often contain auxins. The way that they work is they will kill broadleaf plants called dicotyledons, but not narrow leaf plants, the monocotyledons. So when you actually spread your weed killer across your lawn, anything like a dandelion, broadleafed, it's going to die, but anything narrow leaf like the grass itself will not die. So the reason it actually kills these weeds is that the auxin makes the weed grow too fast and therefore it kills them at that point. The second use that we're going to look at is promoting the growth of roots. So you can buy this stuff called rooting powder, and again, it contains auxins. So if you want to take a cutting from a plant to then grow an identical clone, then what you do is you cut that little bit off the actual plant itself, you dip it into the rooting powder, and that's going to stimulate the growth of roots from that cut little part of the stem. And as a result of that, it will then grow its own roots, and then the plant will survive on its own. Third use is for delaying ripening of fruit. So we can actually spray fruit trees with auxin to delay the ripening process. And the whole reason behind us doing this is that it means we can collect the entire harvest at the same time. And it also means that fruit won't drop off the trees early and run the risk of becoming spoiled. The fourth use is ripening fruit. So we can spray ethene, which is that gas, onto fruit trees and plants to help ripen the fruit quicker. So this means that we can get fruit ready earlier in the growing season to enable us to sell it for a greater part of the year. So it's that ethene gas that makes the fruit go overripe in your fruit bowl as well. So that's why you shouldn't really keep bananas in your fruit bowl amongst everything else because they release a lot of ethene gas, which then causes the other fruits to keep ripening. The next use of our hormones is in producing seedless fruit, or a process called parthenocarpy. So what we're doing here is we apply auxin to unpollinated flowers, and as a result of that, it makes them produce fruit. Because they haven't been pollinated, then they won't produce seeds. So what we find here is that you can get your seedless grapes and seedless melons, etc., which obviously some people prefer to eat because we've used the auxin to trigger that process of fruit development without the need for pollination. The last use of hormones is in controlling dormancy of our seeds. So if we want seeds to germinate when they wouldn't normally, we can just spray those seeds with gibberellins or auxins which then triggers that process of germination. So this means that we can now grow plants throughout the whole year, rather than waiting for that natural dormancy cycle to break, we can break it whenever we want. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now give examples of plant hormones, which are three, remember, auxins, ethene, gibberellins, and you can describe some of those commercial uses of plant hormones, linking the correct hormone 
to the correct use. If you're struggling to remember them, then you can always just go with the law of averages. If you can't remember in the exam and it asks you to give the name of a hormone that's used for a particular purpose, go with auxins because as we've seen, that's the one used in more uses than others.